Now, let's explore the topics that we're going to discuss tonight. First of all, ring it dragged lower by the weakening Chinese yuan loses steam against the US dollar. Next up, Malaysia's GDP grows by 2.9%. It's sort of like a positive news, but Bank Nagara has warned that Malaysia is still susceptible to global uncertainties. Finally, we will talk about Bitcoin, the world's largest cryptocurrency, dumping 11% to a two-month low. So we will discuss the reasons as to why we are suddenly seeing this downturn. Yeah, this and more in our weekly analysis, as usual, not financial or legal advice. Huh? A quick shout out to all our current learners and gatherers, our patrons. Allow me to start with Andrew, Wendy, Edward, Alex, CC, Is, Morpheus, Urshad, Caveman, Balls, Calvin, Kai, Thea and Tommy, Jin Kang, Adrian, Eric, Jess, Wen Yen, Dean, Duhan, Ken, Faris, and Alan, as well as all of our learner members. Yeah, let's dive right into the first topic of tonight. It's been a bad month for the ringgit, a very bad August. Let's take a look at this. This is the US dollar versus Malaysian ringgit chart. The greenback has strengthened by 3.41% since the start of August. And on a year-to-date basis, the ringgit hasn't fared well either. Uh, we lost roughly 4-5% to against the US dollar. Now, the recent weakness comes from the weakening Chinese yuan. You can see over here, ringgit being pulled lower by yuan. Yeah, also, why is the Chinese yuan weakening? Well, China's central bank unexpectedly slashed interest rates for the second time in three months on Tuesday. Now, if you guys understand how interest rates uh, affect the currency strength, you guys will know why the Chinese yuan is weakening. Yeah, because uh, just a quick example, last year, the US dollar, why is it so strong? Right? It's because the Federal Reserve has been aggressively raising interest rates. And that drove a lot of demand towards the US dollar. Now you flip this scenario around. Yeah, China's central bank is doing the reverse. They are slashing interest rates, which at the end of the day will cause the yuan to weaken. And why is the uh, Chinese central bank slashing interest rates? Well, they are ramping up monetary easing efforts in a simple sense, restarting the money printer to boost a sputtering economic recovery spurred by the worsening property crisis. I think some of you guys may know that China is in real deep trouble right now, especially on their real estate sector. Okay, the Evergrande and also other notable property developers, right? Last week, they filed for bankruptcy. So it has a huge toll on China's economy because the real, sec uh, the real estate sector itself accounts for over 30% of China's GDP. Now, rates were cut by 15 basis points to 2.5% from 2.65% previously. The central bank also injected 204 billion yuan to the economy to keep it afloat. The move widened the yield gap with other major economies such as the US, placing more pressure on the yuan, risking outflows. As shortly after the announcement, bond yields and the Chinese yuan fell. Now, you take a look at this chart over here, which is the correlation of the Malaysian ringgit to the Chinese yuan. Now, the candlesticks here is US dollar versus Chinese yuan. And you can see that right after the Chinese central bank announced that rates were slashed, Evergrande falls for bankruptcy, yada, yada, yada. You see the Chinese yuan weakening quite a bit against the US dollar. And I layer another chart on top of it, which is the US dollar versus the Malaysian ringgit. It's very clear how correlated the Malaysian ringgit is to the Chinese yuan. Okay, and why is this the case? Well, that's because uh, China is Malaysia's biggest trading partner for 13 consecutive years. Uh, and therefore, any movement in the Chinese currency as well as any developments in China will affect uh, Malaysia as well as our local currency. Right? So the first reason for the recent uh, ringgit's weakness is due to the weakening Chinese yuan. Now next up, the US Federal Reserve may look to resume interest rate hikes. Yeah, the minutes from the FOMC's July 25th to 26th meeting, which was released on Thursday, if I'm not mistaken, showed that another interest rate hike is still on the table. Now, just now, I kind of explained how interest rates affect the strength of a currency, right? And this is sort of like the reverse to China, right? So the US right now is ramping up their interest rate hikes where previously they were forecasted to pause, okay? Members continue to view inflation as a threat, willing to hike interest rate further to address it. And the Federal Reserve in July raised the Fed funds rate by 25 basis points, to a target range, currently it's at 5.25 to 5.50%. Now, previously, 
after this July rate hike itself, investors, they are predicting a rate pause for the next meeting in September. And in fact, for the rest of the year, markets were pricing in no more rate increases. So the recently released minutes of meeting really disrupted everything, really uh, was really unexpected. Lah. And it's now unclear how the Federal Reserve will act. And this minutes alone, right after they released it, you can see uh, right over here, I didn't label it, but uh, the US dollar, you take a look at the dollar index over here, which tracks the strength of the greenback versus other major currencies such as the uh, Euro, Yen, and Chinese Yuan, right? Right after the minutes of meeting were released, they were saying that, hey, probably another interest rate hike is coming, uh, inflation is still much too high, yada, yada, yada. Uh, you see the US dollar index strengthening. And the same case for the greenback versus the Malaysian ringgit as well. In fact, you look at this chart, right? There is quite a bit of correlation over here, uh, which is why the second biggest reason for the recent ringgit's weakness is due to dollar strength, okay? So her uh, ringgit fell versus other currencies as well. Uh, take a look at the pound sterling versus ringgit as well as the sing dollar versus ringgit. We fell by 1% to 2% over the same period uh, compared to the US dollar as well. Okay. So now on to the next topic, Malaysia's economy grew. But there are a few conditions over here. We expanded by 2.9% in the second quarter of 2023. But this is the third consecutive quarter of slowdown in growth, meaning that although we are proposing positive growth every quarter, the growth itself is slowing. And this is influenced by challenging global situation, decreased external demand. And economists, they previously anticipated the GDP growth to hit 3.3%. So obviously, it's much lower than expectations uh, because of the remarkable 14.2% expansion in the third quarter of 2022. And uh, Back in the ground, Malaysia, they attributed the current quarter's growth to the reopening effects and domestic demand, meaning locally, the economy is still doing quite strong. And for June, headline inflation moderated to 2.4% compared to 3.4% a year ago. Uh, similar decreases in core inflation as well. And what does this mean, right? If you have slowing price pressures as well as uh, lower than expected GDP figures, this will most likely encourage Bank of Ground Malaysia to hold the overnight policy rate steady at 3.0%. So at least there's some good news over here. Like, and in fact, uh, research houses like Maybank Investment Bank, as well as Hong Leong Investment Research, if I'm not mistaken, they are also uh, anticipating Bank Nagara Malaysia to hold the overnight policy rate steady at 3.0% for the rest of the year. So shift to the fund flow status through and fro Malaysia. Now this is important. Why? Because we'll be able to analyze how the Malaysian market has performed and it translates to the strength and weakness of the Malaysian ringgit as well. Why? Because whenever investors, especially foreign investors, right, if they want to invest in the Malaysian market, they have to first acquire the Malaysian ringgit, right? So uh, good news for the Malaysian market, the foreign investors, they continued their net buying streak on Bursa Malaysia for the fifth consecutive week for the week ending 11th of August. You can see over here, right? For the uh, better part of the year, the first half of the year, they were aggressively selling. There are a lot of outflows from foreign investors. And now suddenly they are making an enormous comeback. Huh? Three sectors that saw net foreign inflows were financial services. Now these are banks, huh? banks, technology, yeah, tech stocks, and plantation. So plantation stocks is like a Sim Dhabi plantation, etc. etc. Local institutions, on the other hand, they have turned to net sellers and they are selling for the fifth consecutive week. But on a year-to-date basis, uh, foreign investors, they are net sellers, but local institutions, they have been the ones keeping the market afloat. Yeah, they have been net buyers at 2.68 billion ringgit. Okay. We shift on over to the notable stocks that are seeing uh, inflows and outflows. Now, there's a lot of information over here. So I will only go through what foreign investors are doing because that's the one that captures a lot of volume. Okay. So stocks that seen a lot of inflow uh, for the week ending 11th of August are not the most recent data. It's Maybank, Public Bank, the Naga National, and these figures are in millions. Uh. Meanwhile, stocks that seen notable outflows include Cook Love, Petronas Chemicals, Hata Lega Holdings, and YTL Corp. Now, all of this information that I got right is quite informative, right? And uh, you can obtain it for free. Okay? It's just Google search MIDF reports, and every week, they actually publish a fund flow report. 
and you'll be able to see all these breakdowns over here. And in fact, these two uh, slides that I just showed you, right, is just maybe 10% of the content that they uh, posted on their website. So do go and check it out, guys. It's uh, very interesting. So recent data points to profit taking. Yeah, this is the FBM KLCI index, uh, which tracks the performance of the Malaysian market. And it's clear, right? Uh, the recent, I would say since July, mid-July itself until early August, right? Why the Malaysian market has made such a huge comeback is because foreign investors, they are uh, aggressively entering into local equities, right? And more recently, we are seeing a bit of uh, red in the Malaysian market, uh, in the Malaysian market, which could mean that the foreign investors they have turned to profit taking. So don't be surprised uh, next week when MIDF releases their fund flow report for this week, uh, foreign investors may have switched into profit taking mode. Just informing you guys. Shifting on to the next and last topic for the night, Bitcoin hits two month low. And on Friday, the world's largest cryptocurrency dumped 9% in four minutes. And you take a look at the uh, supports right now, the crucial support stands at $25,000. Uh, but for me, the previous time that I talked about Bitcoin was about the $20,000 support. This is the territory where I believe the uh, crypto market will flip from bullish to bearish. So if we see Bitcoin dipping below this 20K, which is not very far off, uh, uh, it is quite likely we see Bitcoin continue to dip all the way towards its November low of 15,005. So why are we suddenly seeing such a huge downturn for Bitcoin? Well, that's because Wall Street Journal, they recently re released their report stating that SpaceX had sold all of its Bitcoin, totaling $373 million last year and this year. And in 2021, Elon Musk famously said that Tesla invested $1.5 billion in Bitcoin. But since then, they've sold the majority of it, $936 million according to the blog. So this report itself sparked very huge, a very huge initial, initial sell-off and the rest is just cascading liquidations. For those of you guys who have been trading in the markets, you know that uh, every time there's a lot of buyers, there's a lot of, when Bitcoin goes up, there's a lot of leverage in the markets. There are a lot of traders come in and go long in the markets. And when Bitcoin takes a downturn, all these traders, they are forced to sell off their positions, adding more sell pressure in the markets. And so goes the chain effect, which is why we see uh, Bitcoin dumping by 9% in the span of four minutes itself. Now, fixed deposits, let's talk a bit about that. Um, let's say you have a sum of money right now, maybe a thousand ringgit or 10,000 ringgit, and you want to make a fixed deposit, okay? Uh, always, always check with your bank if they have any promotions or not. Yeah, and this can be done with just a very simple Google search, like public bank, right? Just go and Google search public bank fixed deposit promo, promo because a lot of uh, people, especially elderly people, right? They just go to the website, and they go for conventional classic fixed deposits. You can see over here, right? Three months, 2.65%. But actually, a public bank is running a promotion for three months, 3.65%. The only requirement is that you transfer the funds from a different bank, fresh funds from a different bank of the same name. Okay, and 12 months itself, you can get up to 3.85%. So just saying like you're losing out on a lot of profits over here if you go for the classic fixed deposit. La. Similar case for Maybank, five months, 2.75%, but they are currently running a promotion that expires on 13th of September, 3.9% uh, for the first seven months. Their minimum placement is a thousand ringgit. And if you're wondering where to get the best fixed deposit rates, yeah, I got you covered. I have an article right over here. It's been updated as of 18th of August. The highest one is currently 4.22% per annum. Yeah, so that brings me to the end of my uh, session tonight. Uh, thank you guys for joining. I'll see you guys in the next session. Stay safe, guys. Bye.